Welcome back to Child Time Pod. It's your host, Red. A video today from The Wall. Struggling to make ends meet. Women begging for help for bills. I thought you were strong and independent. Don't need no man. Please actually write down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get that child. It's child time. <laughs> you don't clean the house every day. What the fuck are they talking about? Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll see how women say they can't handle the burden of running a household. How many complain about having to do everything alone when they bought their house, and how many end up being depressed because of it? We want to invite you to smash that like button and support us in reaching 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year to get our first plaque. That's the only contribution we ask of you, man. Add your grain of sand to the movement. Share your experience in the comments for any man who might need it. Without further introduction, let's get started. Mothers don't break, but they're broken right now. We are constantly on top. That doesn't even make sense, that statement itself. Top of our kids, because that is a societal expectation that we have to intensively parent our children at the expense of our own mental health. And we also have to be completely on as workers. Again, we're in this hustle culture where you're constantly driving, driving, driving at work. And so if you're a working woman, you have these two huge expectations that you basically have to meet and it's exhausting. And it's why we have a mental health crisis. 51% of mothers say that they're anxious and depressed. The CDC released a study saying that the subgroup that is suffering the most. Everybody in the America says they're depressed. Anxiety and depression are you know, working women. You're seeing this in the UK. It's an alcoholism, Adderall addiction. It is on the rise, rising suicide rates of mothers. We're supposed to be martyrs, essentially, or have it all together. And so there's no outlet oh, for us. Mother. You know, I say in my book, when working women make a list, Poor it's way. like their kids, you know, their partner, their pet, and then themselves. We are last on the list. We do know. Shut the fuck up. With this bullshit victim mentality that everybody's against me. I have to put everything on my shoulders. Shut the fuck up with this bullshit. Because this is not how society runs. Self-care. And society doesn't expect that we, we should be doing it. It's seen as being a bad mom or being selfish when we spend time on ourselves. The biggest consumers of antidepressants in this country are women. And those who attend therapy the most are women. In recent years... Cannabis use among women has also increased. Women weren't supposed to take on everything, but with an 80% divorce rate, which can rise to 90% if they are professionals, where does that leave us? In a broken family unit where children are at a greater disadvantage than children of tired parents, where children are raised by the values instilled by the state, not their parents. I have never thought that being a housewife is an easy task, nope. but it's better than being a housewife and a worker at the same time. But does a woman ever think about this before leaving her husband? No, she only thinks, I must be happy. Because marriage is only about making the woman happy. They put themselves in the worst possible situation with divorce. But is it only the woman who suffers? I doubt it. We also have to consider the men who today are left without their home, part of their savings, and have to start over as single fathers, with state-mandated support payments that are paid every month like a mortgage living with some don't even get to see their kids whatever is left in divorce no one wins all that happens is paying for the decisions made by women i bought a house when i was 26 and fell immediately into poverty okay when i lived with my parents i was living my best luxury lifestyle i went to south korea bought a 2000 plane ticket it, didn't even it's always traveling guys they can't get to live their best life they're in poverty now even though they have a house because they can't travel this whole traveling thing, again, I love traveling. I want to travel more. Uh, there's places I want to go. I have 400,000 points worth of credit card points to travel. I just can't get away for a week or two because I'm busy doing other shit. Because I'm busy doing other shit, I don't prioritize traveling because there's other shit to be handled. I blink twice. I went shopping, luxury goods, all that. Was traveling, was just 
Oh, I was living it up. I felt rich. I had no bills. And I had a full-time nine-to-five job. I was working as a nurse, okay? I was killing it. I bought my own house. That first mortgage payment came in, and I was like, oh, this is a situation. But at first, you think you can handle it, right? Like, you know, what's, what's a couple thou? What's a couple thou? I got it. But then, the pipes in my 80-year-old home broke immediately as soon as I bought the house. I told you guys, these houses are old. My friend bought a hundred year old house. It's actually good because it still uses a lot of redwood and the redwood is really good against termites, but it's not updated in any way, shape or form. All the electrical panels are fucking from a year, like maybe 60 plus years ago. It's a mess. Wiped out my savings. Then another pipe in a different area of the house broke. Okay, that's, I'm struggling. Okay, I need help. Then my neighbor's pipe, it was a twin house. Her pipe broke. And she didn't believe that her pipe broke, but her pipe broke on my side of the house. So all of that water that was coming down was spraying into my home. And then my water heater broke. When I tell y'all, I went from living in the lap of luxury to destitute immediately. Now don't get me to fooling y'all because it was worth it in the long run because that house is now worth like two times what it was worth then. So okay. I'm actually doing pretty good. But at the time, when I tell you I was struggling, I had to go to my parents every other day for dinner because whew, your girl could not feed her. It is what it is. You have to make the sacrifices to get the things you want and need, right? Especially the things you want. You want a house? Yes, you're going to have to sacrifice meals. You're going to have to go eat some pride and go, you know, to your parents here and there. It is what it is. I don't feel sorry for these people because this is normal life. You make sacrifices, so you can't travel. You can't buy luxury goods. Shut the fuck up. Yourself. <laughs> You're just unlucky. The majority of women in this country are buying more houses than men. Many of them always think it's because men are becoming useless or something like that. But it's because we understand the responsibility of owning a house and the debts that come with it. Yep. Sometimes it's easier for your savings just to rent and save part of your money. Okay, so I actually been looking at places recently... And uh, they know my income because they ask for the income stubs. And they're like, well, you make so much money. Why don't you just buy a home? And I'm like, I'm, I'm single. And I'd rather buy businesses that generate me income every month than a home that I'm most likely going to be putting a lot of money into because these homes aren't going to be new unless I bought like a 2016 or 2015 home, which is probably not going to be the case. You don't make any money off these houses. You're actually just putting money in and you don't make anything until you sell the house. Do most people plan on selling their homes right away or something? And even if they do, prices aren't skyrocketing like that to where you're making that kind of profit. I'll say that I'm in favor of every man owning a house. In the end, I see more advantages than disadvantages, but it doesn't stop being a burden and a responsibility that men only want to take on if they have children or a wife. True. But women romanticize this idea, especially single women when they turn 30. Until the repair bills start coming in, they have to clean the yard every week. All the maintenance that usually men handle, plus cleaning every day. That's when the complaints start, because now there's no landlord to solve the problems, and responsibility is kryptonite for women. I want to point out that when she ran out of money, she had help from her parents, went to eat their food when she couldn't afford her own. It's nice when daddy helps pay the bills, Yep. things that many strong and independent women omit. But when life makes them hit the financial wall, here comes daddy to the rescue. There's one video of mine that needs to do well, it's this one. This is the first month I won't be able to afford rent. I'm not a rich person, I don't have a lot of stuff. I have basic household necessities, a couch, a bed, washer, a dryer. I don't even have those things. <laughs> I literally just rent a room. All I have really of a personal item that is like, like that is a bed and like office equipment, which are my chairs and like my desks and stuff. Everything else, I don't have, I don't have couches, I don't have anything. That's about it. A car. I don't have a lot of lavish things. I don't go on vacations and I, I don't spend a lot. Rents increased from 1300 to 1800 Okay, that's Food a big increase. Food prices are too high. I've cut back on eating because I literally cannot afford food. I've cut back on my parents. Again, I don't feel bad because, girl, you can easily live with roommates. You can easily live with other people. You can easily move other people in to split the costs. 
you say 1800 if you just move someone in someone lives in the living room or stays on the lives on, like sleeps on the couch or whatever it is i'm just saying us men we make it work we're going to south couch surf or whatever it is. Or we, there's only a one bedroom apartment. Guess what? Two people are going to live in there. One's going to be in the living room area. One's going to be in the fucking their own room. It is what it is. This is what I had before. When I was in college, I had a two bedroom apartment. We had four roommates. Two roommates, no, five roommates. Two roommates shared rooms and one roommate slipped in the living room. And, he, and that was his room made it work everybody paid like a couple hundred bucks a month that was it snacks cat food treats i'm exhausted all the time from being overworked and underpaid you don't catch a break when you're when you grow up poor i don't need much to be happy i just want to be able to live comfortable i just really need to catch a break right now i'm trying so hard and i feel like i'm not doing enough I don't have family. I don't have anything to fall back on. I just need one video to blow up and it could be life changing for me. Cocaine. Yeah. It's a hell of a drug. Look at what women resort to these days when daddy cuts off their allowance. You believe the story that she has nothing, but just look at the type of place she's living in. Right. Do you That's think what I was any poor person? That was exactly what I was looking at. I'm looking at these pictures. I'm looking at a plant. I'm looking at pretty nice furniture. It's a pretty nice spot who can't pay rent lives like that? What's happening now is that a section on TikTok is being created where women are begging for money, yep. many asking for just a dollar. You might think that's not much, but 20,000 people giving you a dollar adds up to $20,000. Yep. That won't make you a millionaire, but it's a nice luxury to have just for crying online. And I want you to notice the hypocrisy. This works because she's an attractive woman, yep. the privilege of pretty women. If she were unattractive, she wouldn't even get enough for a McDonald's meal. But because there are so many simps giving away their attention, they don't mind giving money to this lazy woman who's just scamming them with her innocent face. Just watch the following video where we expose her. Can I vent to y'all just real quick? Um, I'm tired of being a homeowner. I am tired of being a homeowner. I'm tired of people telling me owning a home is the best investment you could ever have. I do believe that to be true. That don't change the fact that I'm tired of being a homeowner. I'm tired of the problems that it come with. I'm tired of all the responsibility, you know, hanging on my shoulders. I miss renting. I miss renting. I feel like I have more freedom with renting. Now I know when you rent, you're paying month to month and all that money is going down the drain. It's not going towards nothing. It's not investing in nothing. It's not, I know that. But it's also peace of mind, right? If I just paying seven, where I'm at, seven hundred dollars a month, anything happens to the toilet, anything happens to anything, I just tell my landlord, which is my roommate, <laughs> my friend, he takes care of it. He he has to. It's his house. Like there's no getting around it. I don't have to spend those extra things to do these things, because there's some fucking shit that happened. <laughs> like the toilet got went out like the other day, and he had to pay an extra water bill because it was leaking. And then we put a new AC in, which cost him fifteen thousand dollars to put the new AC unit in to keep everybody cool. That's I didn't pay for that shit, and I don't care. I I thought about it so much. Selling my house and going back to live with my mother. Because why not? I don't have kids. I don't have a man. I don't have any drama that I would bring my mama. And I can pay all her bills. Mind you, my mama still live in the projects and income-based housing. She doesn't pay rent anyway. We'll be over there living like kings and queens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, I feel like the only thing that I would miss owning my home or, you know, moving back with my mom or just whatever is the privacy. I do not like people all the time. I do not like noise, you know. But when you move in with somebody or any sort of living adjustment, then you have to understand what that comes with. Of you course. know what I'm saying? And I'm just tired. Not saying that I will go live back with my mama. Not saying that I will go back renting. Not saying that I'll get a roommate. You know, all those things is an option. I'm just tired of being a homeowner. I'm See, I also don't get this thing, too. So my friend's a homeowner. His mortgage is only like 2200 
he still has two roommates to make it so he only pays like $700 for his mortgage. Why are these people, especially these women, so adamant with owning a home and just living by yourself with two, three bedrooms? What the fuck did you get that many bedrooms for if you weren't going to rent it out and you don't have family and you don't seem to be going towards a family? Like, I'm confused. I'm tired of the issues that arise and I look left and I look right and the responsibility is still on you. Like, there's just no help. I'm so tired. Owning a home, I don't give a damn. Owning a home is not what it used to be. I used to take pride in owning a home. I want to sell my home bad. Let it be somebody else's problem. And I like my house. Like when I bought it in 2020, it was newly renovated. I, I you know, I bought it during COVID and I paid pennies for it. And, for, and my mortgage is cheap and I know I shouldn't complain, honey, but I'm say. still going to complain because it's mine and I got to pay for it and I'm going to do whatever it is I want to do. And I'm just tired of the responsibility, if I can only be honest. I feel like I had less responsibility with renting. Of course. <laughs> like if I had one problem, I can call the landlord, you know, I'm right. the maintenance man. I'm calling somebody else to fix the problem. I got and a you problem pay now. For it. I, can, I can call somebody, but then my phone going to ring because I got to fix it. <laughs> what you need is a husband. You need a man to take that stress away, to get you doing yoga in that house. <laughs> to show you the potential of all that space. I bet you'd lose the urge to move out real quick once he has you burning those calories every day. Responsibility is kryptonite for women. Owning a house has many advantages, but it also enslaves you to always live in one place, to not be able- I would say it slaves you, but it, it does trap you for some time. ...able to travel because someone always needs to take care of the house, to always be on top of any maintenance. Instead of thinking about becoming a burden to her mother, she should be looking for a husband. She's not tired of the house. She's tired of being alone in the house. If she had a husband to take the stress away in that house, y'all know what I mean. The last thing she'd want is her mother around, messing with her intimacy. True. But when there's nothing to do in that house, when the only voice you hear is your own, and you don't even have kids, that silence becomes unbearable. So this girl needs $4,000 by next month so she can move into her new apartment. So how is she going to get the money? TikTok roses from Lime. Watch. So I need to come up with $4,000 by April 20th in order to secure a cheaper apartment that I'm looking into. They want $250 per cat for a pet deposit. Why do I have three cats? $120 for the application fee already. I saw someone else do it's always the broke, dusty, musty crusties that have multiple pets. Why? This on TikTok with their student debt. She went live and everybody donated roses and she was able to pay off $20,000 in student debt. Jeez. I think one rose counts as a dollar. So if I get 4,000 roses, I can move into my apartment. So dry begging online. Got it. To live your life. Got it. That is more affordable. Do I think this is going to work? Absolutely not. But am I going to try it? Of course yeah. you think it's going to work. That's why ideas. you're going to try now, it. Now, one would think that this wouldn't work, right? Wrong, this actually did work. This was me just looking at her live recently, and she is getting showered with roses left and right. Now, what makes that even more impressive is the fact that she posted that video yesterday, and already it has over 24 million views and over 1.2 million likes. So I had a good feeling that she was going to get roses, sips. but I don't think anybody saw this coming. And I really think she started a movement on TikTok, because now we see other people on TikTok doing the exact same thing. This might be the NPC trend of 2024. But of course, this trend does come with criticisms. People are saying this is a form of cyber begging. Yep. Others are also wondering why we should pay this stranger money when we ourselves cannot afford to do anything Correct. ourselves. But I am very curious to hear what your thoughts are. What are your thoughts to sending money to people on TikTok who need to pay off their debts? Are you for it? Are you against it? It's their debt. They incurred it. Why the fuck are we paying off other people's debt? Stop it. And would you do it yourself? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure you share this with friends and give me a follow. Damn! Brothers, people don't want to work. Nowadays, everyone wants to live off the most gullible person. Here, we see two things. First, just having a pretty face can really let you live life on easy mode. The worst part is, 
I'm sure she paid her rent with this, saved money, and made a good amount to keep doing this for a while. Yep. You know what will happen? She'll start living off begging. And that so-called career she's studying for will be replaced by being a cyber beggar. Yep. The second thing is how many stupid simps fall for this. Yep. We've always talked about how attention is the man's power over women. But nowadays men are so weak that they just need to see a woman asking for a little attention. And they'll even give <clears> her the money that's so hard for them to earn. That's why those Twitch streamers make so much money. And those working on the Blue app have their minds locked down. Instead of spending your money on improving yourself or investing in a project that actually helps people, or even on the wall service, just kidding, but giving it to a woman who will never talk to you in her life, who's just taking your money with her crocodile tears because she doesn't want to work, it's just pathetic. It's embarrassing to see these modern day scammers. We've reached the end of the video. Oh, modern women are just broke, dusty, musty, crusty beggars. All they do is beg online. That's what their tears are for. The tears are for begging. The crying is begging. The fucking doing all of these things, just talking about their life online is begging. Why? Because they're expecting sympathy. All of these things from men, especially money, resources, time, attention. Broke, dusty, musty, crusties. Please accept them below. I really appreciate that. Jesus.